Good afternoon and welcome to St. Luke's Chapel. Thank you for tuning in today. We pray for the repose of the souls of those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Thomas Deasy.
those who are in chapel with us are certainly invited to receive the sacraments with us. Those at home may want to grab a glass of wine or some juice, cracker and some bread, and to share the sacraments in your home while we celebrate the sacraments here in the chapel. Let us pray. O oh God, we come to you in this hour of worship to give thanks for all that you have given us as we seek forgiveness for any wrongdoing that we may have done. We ask that you guide us, guard us, and protect us with your might as we offer ourselves to your service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. see you all here. Um, after church today is uh, uh, dinner downstairs, a dish to pass, and please everyone come and join us because there's so much food there. Uh, we can't leave till it's gone and so we'll be there three days. So uh, if you didn't bring a dish to pass, don't worry at all about that. There's plenty of food for everybody. And we want you to be with us. So come and join the parish family and uh, have a bite to eat. Um, the, it all smells very good to me. So, so, and there's all kinds of food. So do join us. Um, let's see what else is going on. Anything going on in the area that we need to know about? Today we celebrate the birthdays in October. So. We'll do that downstairs. I, I think there's a couple of nice cakes down there. So be sure and join us, because I'll trip you on the way out if you don't, okay? So uh, do join us. Okay, um, anything going on we need to know about? Any, anything that people want to share with us? <coughs> Pat has brought a quilt that, is it a relative made? Friend. A friend of hers made, and we're, we're trying to decide how we're going to, we're either going to raffle it off, or put it on Marketplace, or whatever, but it's been donated graciously 
to give um, money for our heating season and it should bring us some nice money. It's a beautiful quilt so when you come up for communion stop and look at it. Um, I think it's called Cathedral Windows, you said. Okay. So it's very fitting. So um, we will start the next week, we'll start doing whatever we're going to decide to do, how to uh, make the money on that. So I'll announce that next week. But it certainly is a beautiful quill, just gorgeous. So, other announcements, Rose? I didn't see you, Sue. That's okay. I was just going to say, we wrote about a paper with a lovely article about you in it. Oh, so, thank you. Was that the um, Random Harvest? No, that was Penny Seaver. They went on the Canada Courier, or the Canada County Courier. They both had it. Penny Seaver had it as well. Yeah. I spoke this week and Wednesday at the for the Cander Historical Society on um, not notable and notorious people in Cander. And it went over well. We had probably 75 people and, and it went over well because I sort of know the dirt on everybody about three generations back. So I shared it uh, liberally on, uh, it, was, it was fun. And, uh, I do want to share a story. I sent out a thing and I don't know if I, everyone saw it. On Monday I had to go through blood tests because I have two doctor's appointments next week and you have to have your blood tested to find out if you're going to live to get to the doctors. And so, and I had a glowing report back. My blood sugar was down the lowest it's been in five years and I was, I was so <laughs> proud of myself and I've lost weight and I was so proud of myself and I read the report and within 10 minutes after I read the report, um, the monument service that I ordered my, uh, my marker from for the cemetery two years ago, um, they called to tell me my marker was ready. And so, um, so I think it's uh, God's sense of humor. Like, don't get too arrogant, Phil, because uh, there's only one way out of here, you know? So, so anyway. The health report diminished very quickly when I realized my marker was ready. So, but I'm not ready. So that's that's the way it goes. Um, anything else anyone needs to share? Yes, Trudy. God bless my niece. I'm a great man. She's just turned four months, and she's beautiful. She's just a great woman. I your is it your great niece or your niece? Great niece. Arabella. Arabella. Okay, so blessings for Arabella. Anything else? Okay. So Monday, Monday is Halloween, which the reason for Halloween has been sort of lost through commercial means. All Hallows' Eve, which is Halloween, is the night before All Saints' Day. And All Saints' Day has changed into All Saints' and All Souls' Day on November 1st. It used to be All Saints' Day on November 1st and All Souls' Day on November 2nd, and now it's all combined into one. Uh, but All Hallows' Eve and uh, the idea of that is to remember the saints in our lives, whether they're actual saints or just people that we considered saints in our lives, um, and to honor them. And it was also to sort of uh, do away with any evil spirits or anything that, that's why people dressed in scary things to try to do away with uh, evil spirits that, that might be out and about. And uh, so Halloween is a fun time for people, for youngsters. And I think that 
the church has sort of gotten away from the meaning of All Saints Day, where we honor those that have gone before us. And that's sad, because the people that have gone before us have given us a wonderful gift, a gift of love. Whether they lived to be a hundred years old or had a very short life, their gift of love should not be overlooked. And we so often get caught up in the, the tragedy of someone's death or the sorrow of someone's death that we forget the cherished memories that that loved one has brought us. And that's what love is about, is the cherished memories. And I try at the time of a passing to tell people, don't linger with the death of a person. Cherish the memories and the love and the gift of that person. And there's so many different ideas of life hereafter. Anything from we go to a place that is streets lined with gold with alabaster pillars on all the buildings and mansions and that wonderful thing into the feeling that because of love, our loved ones are still around us. And we may sense them around us. And that shouldn't bother us because they loved us in life. They certainly are going to continue to love us in death. And I think that often people get nervous if they dream of somebody that has died. And when I dream of somebody that has died, I like to think they come to visit me. And that I created a dream around it so it was more believable for me. But I definitely believe that their spirit of love has come to me simply because they loved me. And a lot of people will say, well, I don't dream. Well, we all dream. We don't always remember our dreams. But according to what I've learned in my work, that probably the longest dream that we ever have is about six minutes in duration. And I swear some nights I've dreamt all night long. The same dream, all night long. People don't necessarily want to give in to their fears that we live after death, but yet that's a Christian concept. So why should we fear it? The spirit that gave our body life continues, and that's what we learn as Christians. That the body is temporal, but the spirit is eternal. That the spirit that gave us life, the God within ourselves, that that continues and that gives us life in our body as long as we can support life physically. And when we no longer can, the spirit stays the same but moves on. And people like to say, well, I don't necessarily believe that. Well, if you don't believe in that, how can you understand the Christian concept of life eternal? Jesus, who was God incarnate, God in the flesh, came to us in the human form to show us that we do have life because of the spirit that dwells in us. And when he died, 
His body died, but he didn't. And how do we know that? Because he appeared to people many times after his death, his physical death. And biblically, that's in scripture. It's documented that he proved to us that he lived after the change called death. He lived after physical death. And yet we as people think that he's the only one that did that. But my feeling is that Jesus was human, the same as you, the same as me, the same as those that have gone beyond. And what he was showing us is that we do live after the change called death. And it can help us so much in our grief. And I've often said, and, and you, I'm sure you remember, that to overcome grief, we have to get away from the sorrow of death. To overcome grief, we have to get away from the foot of the cross. To overcome death, we have to realize the love that was given to us by a person. And I don't care if that is a human person, a canine person, a feline person, I'm convinced dogs and cats are just people in different clothing. And I've watched as people grieve the loss of a pet as much as they do the loss of a loved one. And perhaps even more so because it's unconditional love. I know that I've been loved. And I know that I've had unconditional love from many people, dogs, cats. But I also know I've had conditional love. People placing conditions, I will love you if you do this, I will love you if you do this, I will love you if you don't do this. Conditional love. But what Jesus showed us was unconditional love. And he showed us the eternal spirit of God that dwells in each of us. And there's all kinds of questions about the, the physical appearance of Jesus. Thomas doubted that Jesus came. But he was so, so much an apparition that he couldn't tell whether it was a spirit or whether it was his physical being. And some of you will have those experiences where you will know, and you will know without a doubt that your loved one is with you. And that's what we celebrate All Saints Day about. We tend to make death a great translator from no matter how a person was in life, they're always better in death. We put them on a pedestal. We make them out to be something they weren't. I had a relative that, that her and her husband argued all the time. He was an alcoholic and, and they had a rather stormy relationship. And I don't know how many times they wished each other dead throughout their lifetime. It must have been in the thousands. And then the minute he died, she created a shrine for him with his pictures and his mementos and things like that. 
But his spirit didn't change. And it was an awareness of her love for him that she had to face. And she lingered at his death and tried to make something out of him that he wasn't. But he was still a good person with a bad disease that led him in far wrong directions. We need to trust the fact that what Jesus showed us, what Jesus showed us in appearing is what we know to be a spiritual truth. That we do live. And our spirit in this life gives our being meaning and that our spirit beyond this life will continue to give meaning and love if only in the cherished memories of people. We have to let that be God's will, not our will. We have to let that be part of God's making with us. It's very intriguing to me when I experience somebody telling me a story about a loved one that proves to me that their loved one had appeared to them, even in a dream, or that their loved one was around them, but they didn't believe it. And why not? Jesus was a human, human being like you and like me. And what he did for us was to show us that there is eternal life and that we will find that to be true. How many times in our lives do we experience coincidences that we relate to somebody who has gone beyond us? How many times do we do that? And yet we still don't believe it. For me, it's much easier to just say, oh, well, I guess they're around me. I guess I better behave if it's my mother. <laughs> I think that the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. But this week we celebrate the lives of the saints. And you have people in your life that may not have always lived a saintly life, but were a saint to you. And they crossed your path in love because you were a saint to them and they were a saint to you. So for all the saints, let us remember this week that Halloween isn't just a time to dress up and get several tons of candy. Although that is a good part of Halloween. Um, I've enjoyed that through the years. But let us remember those that have gone before us, that have touched our lives, if but a short time, that they've touched our life with love. And the thing I try to remember with all the people that have gone before me, as I talk with people who linger at a death, our loved ones would not want us to have a holiday ruined because they're no longer with us. They would want us to remember the, the holidays that they shared with us. They would want us to remember the gift of love that we shared together and all the fun that we've had, the joyful memories 
the things that might have been difficult experiences, but through faith, with hope, you survived it. In this morning's letter I sent out, after, I, I don't know if anyone heard me swearing, but my computer was not cooperative today, but um, it was enough to make a, pe a preacher swear, and he did. And, but I finally got it out, and, but it was on faith and hope, and they walked together. If you have faith, you'll have hope. If you have hope, you'll have faith. The destinations may not be the way we want them to be, but perhaps they turn out the way they're supposed to be. And it's hope that becomes our destination. It's faith that becomes our vehicle to get to our destination of hope. And the destination may not be what we thought, but it'll be the thing that pulls us forward. And we need hope in our lives. We need hope. We truly need hope. And so, get on the vehicle of faith and go towards hope. If it doesn't turn out the way you wanted it, it still may turn out the way it's supposed to be. So walk hand in hand with faith and hope and continue to fulfill your spirit, the God of your understanding, the God within yourself. And let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. The alms basin is in the back of the church for those who would like to make a donation. Thank you. Our offer card hand is number 291, and we'll be verses 1, 2, and 3.
blessing upon this bread and this wine that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we ask God's blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. Amen let us prepare ourselves to receive the sacrament of this Holy Communion as we pray for all of Christ's church and the world God, we come before your altar this day asking for forgiveness for any sins or offenses that we have done against you, our God, against your creation, against our neighbors or against ourselves. We ask forgiveness for these, our sins. We give thanks for all that you have given us, for our family and for our friends, for our church and our parish family, for our community, the state, the nation, and the world in which we live. Help us to preserve your creation for the generations yet to come, that they too may be partakers of your kingdom here on earth as in heaven. We pray for all people who cannot be with us, especially for the sick and the suffering, and for all people for whom our prayers are now desired. We pray especially for the people of the Ukraine that as they continue their journey through their war-torn country that you will restore them through their faith to a democracy that will hasten their freedoms to their people. We trust with faith that you will touch all people with your healing power. We pray this day for all those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially for your servant, Thomas Beasy. We trust through faith that you have opened your arms in love and mercy and have received him into your heavenly kingdom. Be with his family and friends as they mourn their loss, that their empty hearts may be filled with the consolation of your love and the joyful memories they have shared throughout the years. And now together let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We seek forgiveness for these our sins and are heartily sorry for these our wrongdoings. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins so that we may return to your path and walk in your ways all our days. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. In chapel, let us nod to one another their peace. At home, embrace those you love with peace. Peace be with you all.
When he had given thanks, he shared it among his friends, and he said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord, we present ourselves, our souls and bodies in reasonable hope to life everlasting, trusting through our faith and our love of you that you shall always be with us, that we can never be alone. Strengthen us with your good spirit that we may come to know your love for us, following the example that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us all to pray. Christ. 
the breath of heaven.
in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for being here. Thank you. The food has been blessed, so you can go down and eat as soon as you get there. <laughs>